pretty much it's all I'm going to talk about. Uh, it's mostly the 17th, 18th century Russia, but I will go back and talk a little bit about medieval Russia, uh, which starts a long time ago. Uh, and uh, yeah, early medieval, I guess early medieval Russia uh, starts roughly uh, about uh, in the um, close to about nine, ninth century uh, is about when it is. Uh, the early Russian state that they had was called the Kievan Rus. And it's usually what they call it, or Kievan Rus state, uh, which was based in the Ukraine. That's where it was. You know where the Ukraine is, right? It's kind of between Poland and Russia. Well, it used to be part of the Soviet Union, but after the Soviet Union broke up, it broke away and it's now its own state. Russia doesn't really like Ukraine. They kind of fight a lot, you know. Uh, and uh, But Ukraine was originally known as um, kind of like Mother Russia. Uh, it's where Russia started. Uh, and it's believed that the early founders of the early Russian state were actually Vikings that came uh, into Russia uh, from like Sweden and other areas in Scandinavia. So they were Scandinavians or Vikings, you know, were the peoples that came in to there. And the Slavs, who were like Eastern European peoples that were already there, uh, called them either the Rus, which is the common name, uh, or the other name they called them was Varangian. Sounds like something out of Star Trek, you know, <laughs> the Varangians <laughs> coming, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, the Rus, the Rus uh, is where you get the word Russia from. So the land of the Rus, supposedly the word Rus came from the fact that the Vikings um, used to, um, you know, row their long ships. And the word Rus means to row like to row a ship, pretty much. Now, they had some early rulers of Russia. Uh, most of them lived around the ninth century. Uh, they had uh, Rurik. Uh, you know about Rurik? And uh, Rurik was where they get the Rurik dynasty from, which is one of the first dynasties that they have in Russia uh, overall. And Rurik lived about mid-ninth century, so 800s uh, CE. And he was the founder of a city called Novgorod. You ever heard of Novgorod, which is up in the northwestern part of Russia? Uh, and uh, and then they had another ruler named Oleg, who came right after him, Oleg. Uh, they called him the Grand Prince of the Rus, these rulers. Uh, and Oleg was also called Oleg of um, Novgorod, you can see there uh, as well, in that little thing right there. So there's like the early rulers they had, and uh, most like I said, these guys were you know descended from Vikings and all that uh, originally. Uh, and um, looks like Oleg died about 912 CE, so that's about, you know, close to when they lived, those two. Now, they had the one that's the more important ruler that they always talk a lot about in Russia today, which they call him St. Vladimir, or Vladimir, I think is how they pronounce it. Vladimir the I or Vladimir the Great, uh, they call him as well. Really the first major ruler that's important, uh, and he lived about... Looks like 986 to 1015 is when he reigned uh, over Russia. And he was called the Grand Prince of Kiev. Kiev was like where his capital was. Kiev is like the capital of you know the Ukraine today. Uh, and uh, Kiev became the center of the whole Kievan Rus state uh, around that time. And the reason why Vladimir is important in Russia, he was the one that converted all the Russians to uh, Christianity. Uh, they were um, Christian missionaries coming up from the Byzantine Empire. You may have heard of um, Cyril, I think, was one of the famous Christian missionaries that came from, like, Constantinople. And he, and he helped to convert all the people to Orthodox Christianity. And so Orthodox or Eastern Orthodox uh, becomes the main church uh, in Russia and still is today overall. So that's why he's important. That's why he's kind of been canonized as a saint. Uh, in the Orthodox Church. And he just died like five years ago. Like I think that 1,000 something year anniversary of his death just, just occurred like a few years ago. Uh, and looks like 2015, yeah, basically. So that's who Vladimir or Vladimir the Great is, of course, one of their first uh, <clears throat> real great rulers they had. Now, though, a little later, moving on, uh, then later, they had the Mongols came in, uh, of course, into Russia. You've probably heard about this. Mongols were like, you heard of Genghis Khan, which we'll talk about later, uh, but Genghis Khan uh, invaded parts of Asia and Eastern Europe. His forces pushed 
through Russia all the way to like the Ukraine. And I think they reached Poland at one point, uh, the Mongols. And they sacked Kiev. They destroyed it. They actually burned Kiev to the ground, destroyed it totally. Uh, and so the whole central power of Kiev declined. And so that's why Moscow becomes more important as a city in Russia. So the Mongols were vicious. They took over Russia, probably killed half the people in Russia like they did in China. Because the, uh, you know about the Mongols, they committed a lot of genocide, like 100 million dead, I think, in their conquests and all that. And uh, what happened in Russia, they um, they forced the Russians to become a vassal state uh, to uh, the Mongols, and their empires. Uh, and it was known as the Golden Horde Khanate or Golden Horde Empire, I think is what they called it as well. Khan, Khans were like what they called the rulers of the Mongol states which Khan means ruler or king, I guess. Uh, and um, they called him Golden Horde for different reasons, but I think part of it was because uh, of the fact that uh, the um, they had to pay them gold tribute, like money as a vassal. And then they were also known for living in, the, um, I think, golden colored tents or something like that. I think I remember that story about that. And uh, the Mongols uh, brought in these people called Tartars, T-A-R-T-A-R, -T -A -R, Tartars. You may have heard of them, uh, which were Turks, the Turks. And the Turks actually ruled it. They were like the mercenaries of the Mongols and they actually ruled over Russia. Now, eventually what happens is Russia uh, eventually uh, develops into having what they call czars. Czars are like, what they call the emperors or kings of Russia uh, that will develop. Um, and this happens with the early modern state based in Moscow. And uh, so one of the first rulers that actually used the title, you know, czar was a man named um, Ivan, Ivan the um, third, who I do have a slide on, uh, by the way. Uh, and, um, Ivan was known as Ivan the Great. That's what they call him, of course, in Russia. If you want the years of his rule, he ruled from about 1462 to 1505. And the reason why Ivan's important, Ivan III, is he's the one that united the Russians as like one state. He kind of gathered all the lands of Russia, they say, uh, and made it into one state. He was either called Grand Prince of Moscow, I think is his common name, or I think maybe Grand Duke. He's a Grand Prince of Moscow, this title. And he was the one that actually started pushing the Mongols out. They started pushing them eastward across the Ural Mountains into Siberia and all of that. Uh, and so he starts expanding Russia uh, under his reign around the 15th century. Uh, also, uh, he renovated the Kremlin uh, as well. This is another thing he did. Um, and um, so he basically moved his power base to Moscow and started ruling from there. And it's at that point that the Russians start talking about Moscow becoming this third row. You know about how the Russians talk about that uh, sometimes. And um, he was one of the first czars to start uh, using the title czar. You know, if you hear about that term being used, uh, which is like the word for emperor or king of the Russians, like the word Caesar. And he got the idea from the Byzantine Empire and... Um, Basically, um, it was never official then. So he was like, he wasn't really, it says crowned. He crowned himself czar, but he was never officially recognized as really being, you know, actually a czar. Uh, then they got this other ruler you may have heard of who, you know, a lot of people think is kind of a vicious ruler, uh, which is Ivan the Fourth, um, And yeah, Ivan the Terrible, as they called him, was the really the first official czar of Russia. He was coronated with a title, uh, which I believe the coronation date uh, was in 1547. That's when he got crowned czar. But he reigned from 1530 to 84 over Russia, which is the longest reigning ruler of, in Russian history. 54 years, a long time uh, to reign. Uh, yes, he was a grandson of Ivan the, Fo uh, Ivan the uh, Great, yeah, Ivan the yeah, Ivan the Third, Ivan the Great. Originally, he was Grand Duke of 
Russia or Grand Prince of Russia or Moscow, really, they called it uh, at the time. Uh, and um, like I said, in 1547, he was crowned czar. And so after that, all the rulers are called czar or emperor uh, pretty much after that. He was one of the last major uh, rulers of the Rurik dynasty, which was that dynasty that went back to the Vikings, named after Rurik, the first, one of the first rulers uh, they had. And uh, however, the uh, thing about his name, uh, I don't know if you know much about the name of Ivan the Terrible. They call him the Terrible, you know, about this. Uh, but uh, it's not like saying he's a terrible guy. What they mean uh, is that Ivan was really uh, seen as being uh, this ruler that was considered fearsome, awesome, uh, is what it really meant. So it's a name or nickname where people feared him uh, overall. That's that's the reason for the name. Uh, he was known for a lot of political oppression, which is true. Uh, like if you were against his regime, whether you'd be nobility or lower classes, he basically persecuted people, imprisoned you. Had a lot of people killed uh, under his reign. Uh, there was actually this um, unit called the Apricniki, which was famous. Uh, that I've, I don't think I have a slide on that one, do I? The Apricniki. But the Apricniki uh, was uh, sometimes called the Czar's Dogs. It was like a police force, like a secret police force, kind of like the kind of like the NKVD or KGB later. I guess an early version of it. Russians later have a lot of these secret police they have that police the population in Russia. And um, and so they would go around and just arrest people, kill people and stuff like torture people, uh, basically. And uh, there was actually a case in 1570, which I think was the peak of the political repression in Russia, where they massacred a bunch of um, civilians in Novgorod. Uh, the so-called massacre of Novgorod. So kind of got a bad name, uh, Ivan. Uh, he did build St. Ba Basil's Cathedral. You may have heard about that famous cathedral. I thought I had a picture of the cathedral somewhere uh, that it had, uh, but he was famous for constructing it. It's kind of like right here, uh, the picture, which is in Red Square in Moscow. Uh, he was the one that built and completed it uh, originally. <clears throat> Oh, Ivan was vicious, man. He had this deal where uh, he had a quarrel with his own son. See his staff in his hand? I don't know if you see that or not. But he struck his own son, Ivanov yeah, Ivan Ivanovich, in the head because he uh, quarreled with him over some issue with one of his wives. And he killed him, killed his own son. <clears throat> and so that's why he was one of the last major Rurik rulers, really. All right, then we have some other rulers, of course, that come in later. Now, there's a period in Russian history uh, that they call it the Time of the Troubles. You may have heard of the Time of the Troubles that happened in Russian history. It was a period of anarchy in Russia for like around 15 years where Russia didn't really have a major czar uh, that ruled over the state. I think they had one guy named Boris Godunov, I think, that reigned for a while. But none of them were really, I think, legal you know, as rulers, they weren't really related to the Rurik dynasty, and the dynasty went out. Uh, and so they replaced it with a new dynasty you may have heard of called the Romanov dynasty, which is considered the most famous dynasty in Russian history uh, from 1613 to 1917. Uh, and um, it was kind of founded after the political anarchy of the time of troubles, and they found this guy named uh, Alex um, Alexis uh, Romanov had a son named Michael, Michael Romanov, of course, that they had. Yeah, Michael Romanov was his name, excuse me. Uh, and Michael Romanov was related to um, <clears throat> one of the wives of um, of Ivan the Terrible, Ivan the Fourth. Um, her name was Anastasia Romanova. And this guy was like a grand nephew. They found him in obscurity, I think, in a monastery. He was like a monk or something. They pulled him out, uh, and the boyars, which were the nobility of Russia, made him czar, basically. This is in 1613. So he was really considered the first czar of Russia. 
Uh, he wasn't really wasn't known for much except I think being the founder of it. And then he had a son named Alexis Romanov, Romanov I wanted to get to next, who was his son uh, who came in. He was the second ruler of the dynasty, you can see, uh, which they call him Alexis the first or Alexia, I think they call him also. He was the second Romanov uh, ruler. And uh, it's under him that um, Russia starts to become absolute um, during his reign. So all the rulers are kind of absolute. He had three sons later, Alexis, uh, that were czars of Russia. I won't go into those because they're not really that important, except for the one that's the last one, of course, which I'll get to. And that's the one we need to talk about next, uh, which, of course, uh, is Peter the Great. We need to get, of course, into talking about Peter today. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Peter the Great, you know, the greatest Russian ruler, the you know, greatest Russian czar, uh, of course, in their history uh, overall. Of course, famous for modernizing Russia into a world power. Russia at the time was still kind of medieval somewhat uh, in origin at the time. Uh, and um, Peter was actually a co-rule with one of his brothers, uh, who was named Ivan V. He uh, was another, it was a, one of the sons of Alexis I just talked about. He, he, he wasn't that, um, there was something mentally wrong with Ivan V. And so Peter had more power, but they had this um, half-sister. You may have heard of named Sophia. And she had the real power because they were really young uh, when they both came to power. Uh, both Peter the Great, Peter the First, as they call him, uh, and uh, his brother Ivan the Fifth. Uh, however, his brother died in 16, I think it's 82, I think is the year. Uh, and so Peter, after that, was sole ruler uh, until 1725. So he ruled by himself. Actually, not so, 1696, I think, when his brother died, actually, Ivan V. And so he, co he ruled by himself from uh, uh, 1696 to 1725, so 30 something years. Now, one of the things that Peter's known for as czar, of course, is, of course, he westernized Russia. And one of the things he did that's very, very famous, Peter was one of the first czars uh, to leave Russia and travel to the West, his so-called grand embassy of Peter the Great, which happened about, I think it was like 1696 to 97 is when it happened. He went to the West to, to visit various countries to, to kind of figure out what they're doing to westernize their states, westernize their military. Uh, so he went to a bunch of countries, like he went to Poland. He went to France. Uh, he went to, not France at the time, but he went to Holland. He went to uh, Prussia. Uh, he went to Austria. And he went to Br England, uh, those countries. He later went to France later in the 1710s, I think, as well, later. Visited, like, I think, um, Louis the Fourteenth, I think, in 1717, else later, but um, so he comes back from Europe and he starts this whole program to kind of westernize the country uh, and all that, and so it leads to a bunch of reforms that Peter the Great uh, brings into the country uh, and all that. So one of the things, first thing he did when he got back from Europe, he saw how people were dressed in Europe. They're like, "Hey, we don't dress like that. What, what's going on?" Uh, so he basically decided to basically force all like the men and women uh, to begin dressing more like they do in the West. So they had to change their whole attire of how they dress and all that. I uh, you know that picture on the bottom there, you can see uh, there's a picture of like Peter. It looks like he's cutting people's beards off. Well, if you know what happened, he made all the men cut their beards uh, and shave, you know, and so on. So that was another thing that was also done as well by Peter. Uh, he went to England. Uh, he noticed that, that, that the English over there, Irish and others and all that, were uh, planning to potatoes. Like, hey, we need to bring the potato to Russia. So he brought that to Russia uh, as well. Uh, he also noticed that um, the calendar system is not like Europe. Uh, they've got like, you know, leap calendars and stuff like that. And so he forces the Russia to, to adopt a um, leap calendar, which I think was the Julian calendar initially. Oh, he brings in culture, tries to bring in industries, newspapers, things like that, you know, to kind of make Russia more like everybody else uh, in all that. So that's kind of some of the things in 
Uh, he's kind of an enlightened despot somewhat, Peter the Great, although he's definitely like an absolutist like all these other rulers uh, at the time that are you know, ruling. Now, um, Peter, the big thing he did was the military. He, you know, he modernized the military. It was one of the big thing things that he did. Uh, and um, he, um, found, he founded a more modernized army, uh, which by the time of his death, uh, the Russian army had about 200,000 troops, which was the second largest in Europe behind the French. French was the biggest army probably in Europe at the time because Pia the, uh, Louis XIV is around the same time, you know, overall. He brought in like Western, like, um, like military advisors and generals to, to try to train his troops. And there was one guy named Peter Gordon, uh, who I think was from Scotland, I believe it was, who helped train his forces, brought in cannon, mu proper muskets and things like that. And so they're trying to really modernize the state. Uh, and then in the 1690s, the other thing, that, of course, that Peter's very famous for in Russia today, which I think they're still proud of, he found the Russian Navy. I think it's 1696 or something like that in the 90s. Uh, so he founded the Russian Navy, uh, and that's one of the things he's really known for uh, as well. Um, of course, the other thing that Peter's known for is he's famous for um, expanding Russia, like its territory, not just land itself, but uh, uh, seaports, trying to get like a Russia on a, like a body of water uh, and all of that. So he fought to basically... Uh, control like the Baltic Sea uh, and the and the Black Sea, uh, but the Black Sea wasn't as successful. But uh, under Peter, they will try to start trying to take control of the Crimea region, which is on the northern Black Sea. And that's going to be later when they solidify that under Catherine the Great. Uh, the most famous war that Peter got in was the so-called Great Northern War uh, that was fought in the early 1700s. It was one of several of these northern wars you read about that happened around this time, which were fought in northern Europe, everywhere from northern Germany to Poland and northern Russia uh, and all that that was fought. That was fought against the kingdom of Sweden that was kind of becoming an empire because uh, Sweden controlled parts of Scandinavia and also on the southern Baltic uh, as well. Like, you know where the Baltic states is and northern Poland? Parts of that were controlled by Sweden uh, at the time. Sweden was ruled by this king named King Charles XII, uh, who was kind of like this military-style king. He actually uh, invaded Russia at one point, attacked the Russians, uh, and he soon found out that was a bad idea because uh, Russia uh, could use its vast territories to, you know, um, you know, fight off the their enemies, like they've done so many times against Napoleon and Hitler, you know, and all of that. A lot of times, the Russians would use scorched earth policies, you know, to, to basically defeat the, their enemies, which I think Peter was one of the first to do uh, when they when they invaded Russia and all that. And uh, for that, from that, Peter was able to seize territory on the Baltic Sea, where the Gulf of Finland is. And so what happened with that, Peter was able to eventually construct, construct a new capital he wanted, which, of course, is famously called St. Petersburg famous Russian city. It's now near the Baltic Sea. Uh, and this later becomes the capital of Russia from 1712 uh, to 1918. It was the capital of Russia for uh, over 200 years uh, until the Bolsheviks seized power in the Russian Revolution. And um, Peter um, built this city to be like a westernized type city. Uh, he joked that he wanted the city to be like his window on the West. I think that's what he usually called it, the, the window on the West. And so this would enable him to emulate the, the Western powers and trade with them. And it gave him kind of like a warm seaport, you know, and all of that. He named after St. Peter in the New Testament, not himself. <laughs> you wonder about that uh, with the name. Oh, the, uh, the, the city has a nickname. Uh, which they sometimes call it. It was called sometimes the city built on bones. It was about 100,000 workers uh, may have died building it at one point because of uh, it was built on a malaria swamp near the Gulf of Finland, and uh, mostly peasants built it. And, and so that's 
why they call it that. The city built on bones. Most people don't know that one overall. Uh, he would go on to um, expand it, of course, and uh, do have pictures showing like his famous Peterhof. Of course, he constructed uh, his main palace complex, uh, which Peterhof means in uh, Russian, the uh, Peter's Court. That's what it means. And it's known for having a canal that connects to the Gulf of Finland uh, to where uh, the palace complex is. It's a type of Baroque style palace, uh, which was kind of copying of like, um, of um, it's kind of a copy of like uh, Versailles, like in, in uh, Paris, France, uh, that they had. And um, it did have a nickname. They sometimes call it the Russian Versailles. Uh, and actually, the construction of it was built by this French architect, the same guy that helped construct pretty much like parts of Versailles, was also involved in it uh, as well. So he hired people from like Europe to come and uh, build it uh, and all that. So it's kind of considered like a lavish thing. Uh, although that's kind of what it, I think, may have been bombed, I think, during the war by the, of the Nazis, I think. But that's what it looks like today. And, of course, it's famous for the water fountains. I'm not sure why the video wasn't working at the beginning. I guess I was just having trouble trying to stream that particular video. That's not a problem later. But um, but anyway, but it's, it's known for its numerous fountains and all that, uh, which they sometimes shoot up, you know, during the day. Uh, it's kind of a tourist attraction uh, at, at, at that site. He did also build another site. I don't think I've got a picture of it, but he was famous for building the uh, Peter and Paul Fortress. He built that too, which is uh, also a part of St. Petersburg uh, and all of that. But that's where Peter ruled from, uh, pretty much. That was his court. Uh, and most of the czars will reign from, you know, um, St. Petersburg. They do have another palace that's greater than that one, which is, of course, the Winter Palace, which is still there. Uh, and uh, that's the one that that's, gets built later that's even more impressive than, of course, that one uh, overall. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and move on. We're going to, of course, talk about, and here's some more pictures, too, of the Peter Hall, if you want to look at that. That's the Peter Hall, Peter and Paul Fortress, of course. Got a brief picture. Now, I do need to move on, of course, and talk about Catherine the Great. Of course, that's the other great ruler of Russia uh, as well. Uh, she's also known as Catherine the Second. So, yeah, there's, there's actually two rulers that were Catherine. It was Catherine the First who was the wife of Peter the Great, who briefly ruled as a empress as well. And, um, of course, there she is, Catherine the Great, the greatest female Russian ruler that they had, Tsarina, Empress, uh, whatever you want to call her. Uh, there she is right there. Uh, of course, she uh, was known as a very famous enlightened despot. She was known for her reforms uh, to the state of Russia, or at least tried to make reforms uh, to Russia. She basically continued a lot of the westernization of Russia an expansion that, you know, Peter was trying to do. Uh, and um, after Catherine died, Catherine the first, they had Peter the third that reigned briefly. who was a grandson of Peter the great. And um, they weren't too many good rulers uh, until um, Empress Elizabeth came to power. I don't really have a picture of her, but Empress Elizabeth, uh, she reigned from 1741 to 1762. She was actually one of the youngest daughters of Peter the Great, one of the last real direct descendants, of course, of the Romanovs. And um, she didn't have any children. It was kind of a problem. And so she had this nephew in Germany uh, that she had named Charles Peter Ulrich, um, well, like Holstein, somewhere in Germany, uh, in he was later known as Peter III when he later reigned uh, in 1762. Uh, and what happened was she basically arranged a marriage between Catherine to, to Charles Peter Ulrich. They, the two would get married, which I think was in 1744. That's when the marriage took place between them. And um, Catherine, by the way, hated Peter. She couldn't stand the guy. Uh, just, uh, just like, ah, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, Peter was just, I don't know, he, he wasn't very attractive. And he had gotten smallpox and his face was all scarred. Uh, there were also rumors that Peter was uh, deranged and gay and a bunch of other things. 
tortured cats and stuff like it's kind of weird guy, kind of a Jeffrey Dahmer kind of character, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer is, uh, and, um, anyway, uh, yeah. So the marriage didn't go well. I don't know. They even had any, I don't think they ever had any children together. There's been debate about that, but they think Catherine may have took, took a lover. That's how she was able to have a son later. who was named, um, Czar Paul who reigned later, uh, after she died. Uh, and, um, Catherine is notorious for having numerous lovers. I think like 22. Yeah. They say, say she was a nymphomaniac. She liked sex a lot. I don't know what the deal with that was, but, but anyway, but what happened with, Oh, and by the way, Catherine wasn't really called Catherine originally. That's the name that she took up when she became ruler. She was German too. She was a German princess. Her real name was Sophie of Anhalt Zerbest. And uh, so she came over from Germany and married this, you know, Peter Ulrich guy <laughs> who she hated <laughs> and um, basically became Catherine. And uh, she took up the name Catherine, which was more of a Russian name. And she began to, you know, adopt the Russian culture, adopt actually Orthodox Christianity. She was actually a Protestant originally, Catherine. But yeah, Peter was crazy. Uh, and uh, if you know what happened, um, uh, after Peter became the czar uh, in 1762, Catherine um, de deposed him, basically uh, overthrew her own husband, <laughs> basically uh, with uh, help from the um, Russian nobility who didn't like Peter. Peter was too pro pro Prussian, pro German. In fact, Peter was a big fan of <laughs> uh, um, Frederick the Great. Loved Frederick the Great. Thought he was great. Uh, so. That was a bad thing to like at that time because the Seven Years' War was kind of going on. Uh, and so um, they overthrew him, and they think six months after, I think, Peter was deposed, he died. Or they, they, think, he, they think they had him murdered somehow. They killed him off, strangled him or something, but they killed him off later. So that's how basically she, she basically seized the throne. That's basically, you know, took it, took it from her husband and, Peter III. And Peter III only reigned like six months, by the way, basically. He didn't, he didn't reign long, Peter. So if you're coming in late, Alexander, just, I'll have it up on YouTube later. Or you can go, of course, to um, Facebook. But I'm going to put it up on YouTube, this video. Um, now, of course, going back to Catherine, yes, yeah, she was an enlightened despot. She you know, brought art and culture to Russia. Uh, it was one of the big things uh, that she did uh, in um, Catherine um, was uh, uh, one of these uh, um, rulers of Russia, enlightened despot that uh, corresponded with a lot of the enlightened thinkers at the time. The two big ones she wrote to, of course, were uh, Dennis Diderot, who I'll talk about later on um, next class, and then Voltaire. You've heard of Voltaire, right, in France. It was big. Wrote to both those guys, and Dennis Diderot even came and visited her in Russia. Uh, D uh, D I D E R O T Dennis Diderot, uh, and um, Catherine's big thing, you know, if she if you heard about this, uh, what she did was she uh, created a bunch of reforms in the state, and uh, she brought like a lot of art and culture. And her big thing she did, if you know about this, she opened this museum that was part of the um, Winter Palace in Saint Petersburg, which is now called the State Hermitage Museum, which is like, considered one of the largest museums in the world. I'll, I'll put a video up later on my, on my YouTube channel uh, in the playlist uh, under, under this section, but uh, they have like um, one of the largest, I think it's like over 2 million art they've got from all over like Europe and parts of the world, from Egypt and other places. Uh, and uh, it's something she started and they keep expanding on it, you know, and all of that. It's something she's very well known for. She also set up schools for girls. You ever heard of the Smolny Institute? Probably not. Uh, but it was actually a school for women in Russia that she founded. So she tried to um, educate women uh, and stuff like that uh, throughout Russia. Uh, she had tried to reform laws and things like that, which she was somewhat successful with. But there was one thing she failed to do, if you know about this. She failed to get rid of um, uh, uh, serfdom. Uh, and... Uh, there was a thing you may have heard of uh, that was called the Pugachev Rub. It was either called Pugachev Revolt or Pugachev Rebellion. 
uh, that broke out in Russia. Uh, and uh, it's something she had a real big problem with uh, in Russia, the Pukachev Rebellion. Uh, the date for uh, the Pukachev Rebellion, uh, if you want, uh, was, um, I don't have the dates for that or not, but it was from 1774, no, 73, I think, to 76, I think is about when it was. I think that was the date of it. Yeah, 73 to 76 or 75 is one of those dates is what it was. 1770s is what it was. And uh, there was a guy named uh, Pukachev, Emilian Pukachev, and um, he started this rebellion of serfs and uh, Cossacks, which were these Russian soldiers in the Ukraine. Uh, and some of them wanted to get rid of serfdom. It lasted like two, three years, 1773 to maybe 75 or 76. Uh, and she had to put it down. Because it got to the point where there were thousands of people rebelling, like in the Ukraine, like close to around where the Volga River is uh, in eastern Russia. Uh, and so she had to bring out forces and crush it with the Russian armies. Uh, and so it's really a mess. They killed like 10,000 people. So she could be really brutal. And Pugachev was like, they, they caught him and hanged him. Uh, so so basically, uh, but that's one thing about Russia under Peter the Great and Catherine the Great. Uh, serfdom became a big thing in Russia uh, overall. Uh, and um, it'll continue until like the 1800s until they get rid of it in the 1861. That's when they eventually ban it. So now there's one more thing I do need to talk about with uh, her, her as well. She was known for expanding Russia, um, uh, Catherine. Uh, let me see if I have some slides on this on there. Yeah, he do, she does uh, partition Poland. That was one thing, of course, uh, she was known for. Um, I thought I had a map of that. Yeah, I do. Here it is. Partition of Poland. She was involved in that on uh, the late 18th century, 1772, 1793, 1795. She partitioned like 60% of Poland, which uh, Poland kind of um, broke up as a state, and it was taken over by Russia, Prussia, and Austria. They kind of gobbled up their territory. In Russia, you can see, got like the eastern part of Poland and just took it over. And so the Russians for years have thought that Poland was part of their state. Oh, you know that uh, and all that. Uh, then Russia was also known. So they're, they're taking over Poland over here under Catherine. Also under her, they took over southern Russia, uh, southern Ukraine. You have the southern Ukraine. And what they call the Crimea, the Crimea, just a little island, which is on the bottom here. That was another thing she did uh, as well. Uh, and um, not that slide, this one. Uh, and um, so she took over that area as well. Uh, and um, that area was taken from the Turks, the Ottoman Empire. They fought a bunch of uh, Turkish wars with them, with the Russians. Uh, and um, it's at that point that Russia's empire expands from like Poland, the Ukraine, uh, and it goes all the way to Siberia. That's how big uh, it's, it gets at one point. I think Russia, it starts to get like something like, how big was Russia? Was some ridiculous amount, I think Russia was, which one point several billion acres is how much they control Russia. Uh, overall. Then they also started taking over Alaska uh, as well. They started going into there and colonizing it uh, as well. So they expanded to Alaska too. So anyway, so that's like the peak of all the things that, you know, happened um, under under her reign. Um, oh, here's another slide about the Pugachev Rebellion, all the way if you want to look at it later, which is under there. Uh, but Pukachev was this guy that pretended to be the dead Tsar Peter III, but he wasn't. So, yeah, it may have lasted about 1775, but they think it broke out in 1773. So that's stuff about Catherine. We'll get later into uh, the later Tsars of Russia, but they'll have like, um, like Catherine has a son named Paul who reigns briefly for a few years. He's not that famous. But there is a Tsar after Paul that's a ruler, which is uh, Emperor... Um, Alexander the First, he's probably the third greatest uh, czar of the, of the Russians. 
who comes next is a grandson of Catherine. And um, Alexander I is known for defeating um, Napoleon when he would invade, of course, um, Russia. So let me go ahead and review real quick, and that's going to be it for today uh, pretty much. If you have any questions later, let me know uh, either through my YouTube channel um, or my email address, or if you're on StreamYard right now, you can also send me, of course, a question about something if you got something for now. Uh, but you can give it to me later, of course, if you have a question or comment about something. Now, um, so yeah, yeah, it says, what invading Northern Europeans developed Russia first? That was, of course, the Vikings, which were called different names in Russia. The Rus, the Varangians, they were also called. I told you guys like um, Rurik and o Oleg were basically related to them, like to the Vikings that settled in Russia. Uh, who was Vladimir the First? Also called Vladimir the, it's called Saint Vladimir or Vladimir the First. Uh, he, of course, was the first great ruler, the head of Russia. He was the one that basically converted uh, the um, Russians into Orthodox Christianity, and he found it helped found like the city of Kiev, which uh, became like the early capital of Russia at that time. What Asian threat almost destroyed Russia? That was, of course, the Vikings. Excuse me, not the Vikings, the Mongols that came into Russia. The Mongols of Genghis Khan. And the Mongols um, overran Russia in the 13th century, 1200s. Uh, and uh, they made Russia a vassal state, which was called the Golden Horde Khanate, which was like a Mongol empire state ruled by the Mongols and the Turks. And uh, it was called Golden Horde because they... Russians were kind of like vassals to the um, to the Mongols and all that. They had to pay them off with gold tribute, etc. What was the first dynasty of Russia? Uh, it was known as the Rurik dynasty. It dates back to like the Vikings and all that, the Rus, uh, and that guy named Rurik who was considered one of their first rulers a long time ago in the ninth century. Uh, who was uh, some of the early rulers that used the title czar? The first one was Ivan the Fourth, of course, who was known as the Terrible. Ivan the Fourth, of course, uh, was the czar. I told you that basically united Russia. Uh, uh, Ivan the Ivan the Third, excuse Ivan the Third, excuse me, the, the the Great. Getting confused there. Ivan the Third, the Great. He was the ruler that united uh, Russia uh, as a state. And he's the one that made Moscow like their capital, and the Kremlin was like, you know, it was kind of refurbished uh, under his rule, Ivan the Third, the Great. Uh, and um, I told you he was the first one that started calling himself Tsar, but it wasn't really an official title. That would be ruled by Ivan the Fourth who would do that. So Ivan the Fourth came in, the terrible, excuse me. Ivan the Fourth, he was famous for. Um, creating the, you know, the, the Russian empire uh, that would be ruled by the first coronated czars. So Ivan IV was the first czar to be crowned czar officially, 1547. Uh, and under his reign, which is one of the longest, uh, started to become absolute. Uh, they pushed the empire into Siberia. Uh, he's the one that, of course, Built St. Basil's Cathedral. That's part of Red Square, um, where where you know uh, the Kremlin is nearby. Uh, and um, and Ivan was also known for being oppressive. Um, you know about that. Uh, he was uh, basically known for a lot of political uh, oppression against his people. I told you about the Apricniki, uh, that was a famous secret police, the so-called czars, dogs, which oppressed people. He also massacred the city of Novgorod, which he was known for. Killed his own son, too. So the guy was kind of a harsh ruler, very absolute, you know, at that time in Russia. Time of Troubles was a period where Russia went through a period of anarchy, uh, and um, there was like no major czar that ruled over the country uh, until the uh, Romanov dynasty took over. So what dynasty dominated Russia from 1613 to 1917? That was the Romanov dynasty founded by Michael Romanov. And then he had his son, Alexis. Those are like the early rulers of it. They're not as important, though. Um, 
but just know about Michael at least. Why is Peter the Great seen as being important? Peter, of course, is seen, or Peter the First, is known as the greatest czar of, of Russia. Uh, he was the one that modernized the Russian state and made it into a westernized power. Uh, he's known for his reforms, Peter. He was part of, of course, the so-called Grand Embassy in the late 1690s, where Peter traveled uh, to Europe uh, to, to modernize the state. Uh, that was something he was the first Russian ruler to do. He also modernized the military, modernized army out of the Russian Navy, also as well in 1696. Also fought one of their first famous European wars against Europe, uh, which was, of course, the Great Northern War uh, in the early 1700s. He fought, of course, the King of Sweden, King Charles XII, thought he was a pretty good ruler. Uh, and what did they fight over? Uh, they fought to control the Baltic Sea, the eastern arm of it uh, in the Gulf of Finland. Uh, and so that would be very, very vital to um, Peter getting a warm seaport uh, for the Russians later. What new capitals he built near the Baltic Sea, of course, in the Gulf of Finland? Of course, we've talked about that. The St. Petersburg, of course. I told you about, which became the capital of Russia in 1712. And that, of course, would be the capital of Russia until 1918 when the Russian Revolution, of course, stopped that. So Moscow is not the capital now. What buildings were something that he's famous for building, of course, in St. Petersburg? I told you he built, of course, the Peterhof Palace. So I showed you that clip at the beginning, uh, which I'll put up later, too, as well, on my YouTube channel. And um, that was his palace complex that was kind of a copy of, you know, the so-called Versailles. It's called the Russian Versailles, of course, in Russia today. And then also the Peter and Paul Fortress. He built that to St. Petersburg. Well, as Catherine the Great famous for, uh, she was the greatest female ruler of Russia, uh, their greatest empress in Tsarina. And uh, she was, of course, famous for being an enlightened despot. She was kind of, you know, just like Peter, she was kind of an enlightened reformer. Uh, and she also, of course, um, was in, was famous for trying to uh, expand like art and culture and things like that. Uh, she married that guy Charles Peter Ulrich. She later was called Peter the Third, or Czar Peter the Third. They dubbed him, uh, and he was uh, hated, of course, by Catherine. And eventually, she overthrew him. Uh, basically, um, I'm missing a slide. It's like I'm missing a slide. Oh, there it is on the bottom. I didn't see it, which is right there. Um, it looks like I'm missing a slide for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, other things, of course, Catherine's known for. That's, that's not on there, but, of course, we talked about the fact uh, that she was known for, for reforms of the state. Uh, like I told you, she brought in art and culture. Uh, of course, I told you about the State Hermitage Museum uh, that she created uh, overall. Uh, she was also known for putting down the Pugachev Revolt, which was a rebellion which um, basically kind of wanted to end serfdom and create reforms, more reforms of the state, uh, but it was crushed. And so serfdom was never really something they got rid of at the time until 1861. So Russia is going to continue to have serfdom for a long time uh, after that. Uh, she was known for mostly her expansion of Russia. I told you how uh, Russia expanded greatly during her reign. Took over eastern Poland. They took over the Crimea. Southern Ukraine was all colonized uh, by the 1780s. Uh, and then they also expanded into Alaska and Siberia. So those are probably her greatest things she probably achieved you know, during her reign, besides all the art and culture that she brought to uh, Russia, like the State Hermitage Museum. Uh, as well. So that's pretty much the stuff about Catherine the Great um, overall. Um, I think that's pretty much it uh, about um, her. Uh, and um, I'll, of course, be um, moving on later in the week on Thursday to talk about, uh, I'll be talking about, uh, let me put this up here like this, but I'll be talking later about the Enlightenment and all that coming up. It's age of, age of, um, reason or scientific revolution uh, as well. That'll be my next thing on Thursday. So uh, there should be already a lecture I'm going to post, I think, uh, that's in modules, but I'll put an announcement up later about that. 
Uh, and uh, after this broadcast is over, I'm going to, of course, um, upload this to my uh, YouTube channel. Okay, so you should be able to get that. Uh, but use that uh, Facebook link just for a temporary link until I get that uploaded. Okay, so if anybody has any questions, uh, like I said, let me know about this lecture. Like comment, please comment on my YouTube channel uh, about these lectures I'm posting. Um, comments, questions, any kind of question you want. I don't care what it is, even if it's, you think it's stupid or whatever. Uh, but you know, you remember you do get bonus points for asking questions on YouTube comments. So uh, I don't know why students don't figure that out. You know, like what the deal is. But anyway, so let me know if you have any uh, uh, comments, questions later. Uh, if it's just like an administrative thing about something else, not about the video. The lecture, uh, just email me at my, my email address, Simon D at mybrcc.edu. So that's it for today. A uh, short lecture, of course, a little bit today. Uh, but don't forget before we go uh, about the um, online exam, you know, don't forget about, um, you know, getting that done. Uh, it is going to be up till next Tuesday. I might even give you an extra day on it uh, as well. But you know, start working on that today. It should be up already. You want to start working on it. But I'll get that other video up, this one up, uh, of course, in a little bit uh, today. So that's it for today. Uh, Y'all take care. Uh, those that are out there, stay safe. Uh, and, you know, try to watch this video as many times as you can uh, whenever you need it. So that's it for today. And y'all take care. So good morning. Y'all take care. I'll see y'all later.